Two weeks ago, I wrapped up my sophomore year at college, and I realized it was a bit of a milestone year for me because it marked the 10th year since I had started coding. Now, 10 years is a, is a big milestone for a 19-year-old. That's over half of my life. And, you know, code has taken me on a pretty crazy journey so far, and I have no idea where it's going to take me from here. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to make a video reflecting on these past 10 years and kind of the journey that has taken me on with around a minute for every year. So in 2009, I got really lucky because my best friend at the time was a little bit ahead of the curve. And so when his dad was looking for someone to make a web page for him, he decided that he was going to learn. So he picked up basic HTML and CSS. And because I was his best friend, I learned too. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of code from the early years, but I did find this beautiful web page that I sent to my friend in May of 2010, where I was writing a little tutorial on HTML. HTML is a cool language of coding to learn. It is a very basic coding language yet much can be done with it. You know, as you can see, I, I mastered the art of content creation early. You know, at this point, we were just kids having fun. We weren't, you know, trying to get a head start on APCS or, or anything like that. Like, we were literally just playing around in our classroom computers for fun. You know, in grade six, picked things up a little bit. You know, I already had some HTML and CSS, so I figured what's next, JavaScript. Only I didn't really learn JavaScript, I just learned how to copy paste JavaScript to make my web pages a little more interactive. Uh, actually, in May of 2011, I uploaded my first coding video to this YouTube channel, showing off this uh, super cool menu that's animated, you know, awesome sauce. So also in grade six, I learned how to make Minecraft mods. Only again, I didn't really, I just learned how to deobfuscate the code and then change one or two lines uh, to make really minor tweaks. So you'll remember in 2011, if you're a real Minecraft fan, uh, that you didn't used to be able to build fences on top of each other. Well, I changed the one line of code that allowed you to do this and then released it. And it was my most downloaded mod, got like 200 downloads or something. And uh, years later, it's in the game. So Mojang, you're welcome. <music> So by grade seven, I had already picked up, you know, some actual JavaScript. I learned how to write some code. So I was able to do things from scratch. Uh, like in September of 2011, I made this little web page with these fish swimming around on it. But then I kind of stepped out of the realm of web programming. So in grade seven, I picked up what is still my favorite programming language, Python. And I, and I remember the exact project where I picked it up too. My best friend, we wanted to make a program that would flip coins for us, but not just, you know, one coin. We wanted to flip millions of coins. And then we wanted to know, you know, what is the percentage of heads and tails? How many heads in a row were we likely to get if we flipped a million coins? Things like that. So to answer these questions, we figured out how to write a little Python script. And then we put that script on GitHub where you can still download it and run it today. And it still works. I mean, the code is, is, is bad, it's not great, um, but it, it's a fun little program. It's the same type of thing I'd write today. It's just a little hundred line piece of code uh, to answer some obscure curiosity that I have. It might not be useful to the general population, but it answers a question that I wanted to know. So in grade eight, I took my newfound Python skills and entered the world of competitive programming, you know, make or break, do or die stuff. Uh, no, in reality, these were, these were very chill competitions. The way they worked, you had three hours to answer five questions. And the questions, if you were clever enough, you could usually solve in one or two lines of code. Although I didn't really know that at the time, but it was usually 10 or 20 lines of code for me. But you know, I was okay at these. Uh, I, I wasn't, you know, top in the country, uh, but I did make the honor roll, you know, got perfect on four out of five questions. No big deal. Kind of peaked in grade eight. It's been on a bit of a downhill ever since. So then in the summer after grade eight, I, I started to just make a bunch of little things here and there. So I made a web app that rolled dice. Uh, I made one that plotted points and I made a Python script that generated static web pages, kind of like a content management system. None of these things were, were super great or, or super useful, um, but they were just fun to make and to share with my friends. So in grade nine, high school hits, and we didn't have grade nine computer science. My, my best friend that I'd been coding with for the past, you know, four years had gone to a different high school. So I didn't actually code for most of the start of the year. But then in April of 2014, I had this idea to, to build what's called an optical character recognition tool, OCR. Uh, what this is, is it's something that you can take a picture of some text, some handwritten text, and it'll convert it into uh, machine readable text on your computer, stuff that you would type. So I, I built a janky little script in, in Python and it worked. So as long as, you know, you took a very zoomed in picture of my handwriting written in black pen on white paper, 
and it was only one line and it was straight. Uh, you could get what text it was. It was great. So then over the summer, I did a program at my local university where they taught us how to code on an Arduino, which is basically a tiny little computer uh, that is really easy to interface to hardware like LEDs and switches and sensors and so on. Uh, and so I then uploaded a video onto this YouTube channel that's still public, uh, showing a little Python script that I wrote that communicated with my Arduino uh, that lit up an LED every time I had an unread email in my, in my Gmail inbox. It was actually kind of useful. So in grade 10, I got really lucky again because I was taking computer science at my school and the teacher had a PhD and we were learning Python, which I already knew pretty well. Uh, and so when I kind of blew through the curriculum, we had some fun. So my final project was a Python version of the game Othello that actually had uh, a computer AI. And what it used was, a, it was called minimaxing and it had alpha beta pruning. Uh, it might just sound like a bunch of words if you're not familiar with this. Basically what it means is it would compute all of the possible moves that I could make and that it could make for I think three or four generations, depending on the difficulty, uh, pruning out the ones that were obviously bad. And then it would choose the move that would maximize its possible points and minimize my possible points. So it was actually pretty good and you can download it and play it, it's all on GitHub. So then in the summer after grade 10, my friend and I came across an ad for a hackathon, which is a programming competition, which in 24, 48 hours, you start from scratch and you build something. And then at the end, the best projects win prizes. And so we entered, we built a bad project, we lost, uh, but we kind of fell in love with hackathons and that would kind of shape the next few years. <laughs> So grade 11 was a big year for me in terms of writing code. It started out with a bunch of hackathons. I uh, made things like a robotic hand that opened when you clenched your jaw, a social network for trees, uh, an online platform for learning code. And then at the same time in computer science class, I was having a lot of fun building things. I built a reaction diffusion simulator that made really cool patterns that I uploaded here on YouTube. Uh, I found the convex hull of points in 3D, uh, and I played a lot with, with the Mandelbrot and with Julia sets. Um, so overall, just had a lot of fun. And then around this time, my buddy and I released a clicker game on Android called Clicky Kitty, probably one of the best Android games of, of that year, if you ask me. Uh, it had 100 downloads. And then with that same friend uh, for an engineering class, we built a robot that would use a webcam to find a tennis ball and then shoot it with a laser pointer. And then in the spring, I wrote a buggy little program that measured the growth rate of trees uh, using Google Street View images. I ended up going to nationals for science fair with that and winning a silver medal. And so finally, in the summer after grade 11, I landed a job as a software developer intern at a Canadian tech company called Shopify. And basically, Shopify had sponsored all the hackathons that I had been to, and I kept bugging them about hiring a high school student. So eventually, I got a first round interview, and then a second, and then a third round interview, uh, and then I got a job offer, and I ended up working on the Plus team on the wholesale product uh, and learning a ton, because this was my first time working with actual professionals that knew what they were doing, uh, and it was an amazing experience. I love the company. Okay, so senior year of high school, I didn't code very much. Uh, I was kind of focused on finishing up school and also pouring my energy into uh, other things like these videos. So I did have a few fun little projects though. So I wrote and released a game for Android called Eleven. Uh, and then I also found this Python library for web scraping that I had a lot of fun playing with. Uh, and I built this, this program that would track my, my Instagram, my YouTube following. And then in the summer after grade 12, I was back at Shopify working on a very ambitious project called Flow that would automate tasks for plus merchants, which is basically, you know, if this event happens, then do this action. And it was a ton of fun. I was working again with some really smart software devices Developers, uh, and I learned a ton about, you know, writing good code, good code practices, um, and it kind of shaped a lot of, of practices that I follow in my code today. Um, but by the end of the summer, I was kind of ready to go to school. In fall of 2017, I started my freshman year at Harvard, where I'd be studying computer science. Cue the thousand angry comments about me clickbaiting Harvard too much. So the fall was obviously a whirlwind, you know, for a number of reasons, freshman year always is, but I did take the famous CS50 course with David Malin, uh, and for the final project in that course, uh, my friend and I built a mobile app that would find safe locations near you on a map, only we didn't really have a database of safe locations, so we just plugged in Starbucks's. Uh, we just hoped that our TF wouldn't notice that we basically just built a Starbucks locator app. Uh, he didn't. We got an A, 
that's the power of marketing. So then in the spring, I took another freshman computer science course. Uh, this one was functional programming, learning OCaml. We didn't really build anything cool, but, but you know, that was okay. Uh, and then as my YouTube channel kind of blew up, uh, the school year ended and I went back to Shopify, where again, I was on the flow team uh, and I started off by writing code, but then we didn't really have a product manager at the time. So I stepped more into that role and I don't think I did a very good job. I mean, it wasn't a terrible job. I, just, I didn't have a lot of guidance. I didn't really know what I was doing. And also I was kind of burnt out. So. And in my free time, I built a few scripts here and there. I did some sentiment analysis on YouTube comments for a video. Uh, and I wrote a little personal bot that would do things like, you know, track followers, track stock prices, and so on. They were, they were cool, but not super significant. They were just fun little projects. All right, and this kind of brings me to the last year of my life, sophomore year at college. Uh, and so in the fall, I took an artificial intelligence course, uh, and you can kind of see from like the history of projects that I've done, uh, whether it be like the OCR app, the tree growth app, uh, the Othello game, uh, I've always kind of had this interest in, in computers making intelligent decisions. So I had a lot of fun in this course. Our final project for the class was, uh, was a tower defense game that we made, uh, kind of like Bloons, where we have machine learning agents figure out where to place towers optimally uh, in order to get the most points. Uh, it was kind of my first taste of like real AI, and I'm kind of hooked. I want to do more. And then in the spring, I took a more theoretical computer science course, learned a lot about, you know, algorithms and math, uh, but didn't really build or write any code for it. Uh, and also I was kind of just trying to be a happy person, like, there were some life events that, that kind of set me back, so I wasn't really doing a whole lot of productive stuff in my free time, um, but hey, that's okay. And so that brings us to where we are now, the present, um, and what I'm up to right now. So I'm not actually taking an internship this summer, I'm doing something different, uh, although I haven't talked about it yet on the channel, and there will be a dedicated video for that, but it will involve writing code, it'll involve uh, just writing in general, making videos, all my little passions that I've had, uh, and some other things that I unfortunately will not be able to talk about. On the YouTube channel. And so that brings us to the end of our, of our 10 years of code, from writing really bad HTML tutorials to winning hackathons, working on uh, professional teams, writing only kind of bad artificial intelligence. Um, it's been a ride. My life has been absolutely changed by code, but also my relationship with code has kind of changed over the years. It started off as kind of a novelty, something fun that I could just do with my friends in our classroom. And then it slowly evolved into something until it became a passion in and of itself. In grade 11, I loved writing code. It was so much fun. But since then, it's kind of become clear that, that code is just a tool, one of many for me to, to satisfy the curiosities that I have. So if you've made it this far, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Uh, feel free to leave a like, a dislike, a comment, uh, you know, post on Reddit. Uh, clowning me for only being an amateur coder after 10 years, whereas you are a master elite computer scientist after only two. I mean, really, whatever you want. And if you're new, consider subscribing because I do have some fun videos coming your way this summer and in the next year uh, and, you know, the foreseeable future. But I gotta go make them, so I'm gonna go do that. Uh, you go get on with your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.